Hey folks, so we're going to try something different. I'm going to do an unboxing. I'm going to use just the macro lens for it. And uh, that'll get us real close to uh, the product. Let you guys see a little different uh, view from what we normally do. Alright, so in this video we are unboxing the ASUS Prime H60 Plus D4. D4 stands for DDR4. Um, you know, it took me a little while to figure that out, right? Uh, but uh, you'll notice uh, if it doesn't have D4 on it, it might be D5, right? So DDR5. DDR5 RAM is way more expensive than D4. So we'll get uh, we'll get this box open. I just want you guys to see some of the stuff on there. This is LGA 1700, 11, 12th Gen Intel, sorry. Intel Optane HDMI, Windows 11 Ready, Asus Aura Sync ARGB Gen 2. Now we've got obviously quite a few Asus motherboards and quite a few of the 12th gens so far. Here's some of the ports that you know I'll probably uh, bastardize in the video, just so you know, um, in case you're curious. All kinds of different USBs, so it's hard to keep up with that. Ethernet 2.5 gig. Um, we'll see that, the graphics, audio features, a lot of times I screw those up too. CPU, this most likely will support LGA 1800. And this is the first of the H670s we've had on the channel. We've had, we've got two Z690s, a B660M, and the H610. Um, a lot of aspects, this is as good as a Z690, except for the ability to overclock a unlocked CPU. So, let's make sure we get this right in the video. If it says here, folks. So, the M.2s, at least two of them are Gen 4, okay? From reading that there's gonna be three of them so let's go ahead and get this open all right so honestly I, I really don't always buy a lot of ASUS motherboards it's just they've been way cheaper than uh, most of the others usually you know it's ASRock you can find all the cheap stuff with ASRock in this case Zeus was right there. Driver disc for the Z690 and H670. Uh, I do have, right now I've got the i7-12700F in a Z690P, which is D5. Don't have the D5 RAM yet, waiting for that to show up in the mail. And we will uh, probably keep the i7-12700F in there. I think we'll put the i5-12400F in this. Um, just to experiment with it and get, you know, a better idea of what it's capable of. So, the manual. I wish uh, we could spend all day on the manual. Here's the, uh, the motherboard layout. Hopefully you guys can read the numbers. If there's something on here you want to see that I don't call out. Oh, wow. They don't have it listed out, folks. Um, so we're not going to go through all these. Alright, let's go ahead and uh, see what else we got. IO Shield. You know, not a big fan of these. You spent all this money on a motherboard, you would expect it to be built in. Here's a little M.2. Some kind of vibration dampener. And then um, two more M.2 screws with the standoff. So I still have not gotten one of these awesome motherboards, folks, that has um, the patented, I'm assuming they're patented screws for the M.2s that you don't have to use a uh, Phillips head screwdriver on. Comes with two SATA cables, just like pretty much every other motherboard. So we'll get into this next. 
just so happens I missed it. There was one more standoff and M.2. All right, folks, so we'll get real close here. Um, in case you want to know what this reads, this is the uh, obviously the cover for the CPU. Install processor first, then remove and keep the cover. So, you know, interesting, uh, in the past, they, you know, you would put the cover in and it would pop off, right? Um, these are so much harder to get to pop off. So I'll actually put the CPU in, then I'll take physically remove the cover myself instead of having them pop off. Um, but that's another story. Doesn't say anything about supporting LGA 1800, which will be 13th gen, but most likely this motherboard will. Only a uh, one by eight, so would not recommend this one, this motherboard really for your i7s and i9s. Though um, it's questionable whether it really will help the i7 that much. Even though I did some, I did get better benchmarks uh, even out of the i5. Uh, with the power limit set all the way up, but uh, you know whether I needed that extra one by four, that's another story. Definitely didn't need it for the i5. Potentially didn't need it for the i7. I would say you probably need it for the i9 if you want to get everything. Um, DDR4 RAM, you can see that there, and of course you know still doing the same thing where if you only have two sticks of RAM. You are going to do uh, put them in the light gray spot, okay? As you can see there, it actually notes the little brackets around it, calling out B2 and A2 sockets, okay? 24 pin connector for uh, coming from your power supply to power your motherboard up. Here's some uh, RGB stuff, addressable. One of these is addressable, uh, it should be Gen 2. This motherboard actually has both USB 3.0s right next to each other. So if you have a case that's got four USB 3.0s on it, uh, this is a good motherboard for you to support that. Only four SATAs, which for a lot of us doesn't really matter. Even though I do have one computer that's got about eight drives hooked up to it. Um, but that is the only computer that has that. Case header right there. I don't think we missed any others on this side. Oddly, there is only the one so far. Okay, this is always important. Um, and if you're watching this video, this is one of the reasons I like macro, folks. You see that? You can actually read this shit. So, you can tell which pin so this is your front panel connectors, okay? The left you see power LED, power switch. So that would be the top two pins. And me pointing to is probably not going to help. But uh, there is your power switch. This is really the most important freaking connection from the case, okay? Uh, everything else is what it is. But you want to start your computer up, you need that one. Got the higher, on the front row there to the left, the hard drive light. Then the next two pins will be the reset switch. Uh, up top here, those pins will be your uh, speaker, in case you have that little PC speaker. Two more SATAs. Uh, oh, sorry. So the ones on the side here are two horizontals, and it has two verticals. Okay. Two more case fan headers. You can see what these guys are. This should be USB 2.0, addressable RGB Gen 2 here, TB header, COM stuff, then the uh, HD audio right here. Okay. If you care, SD, SPDIF right there. All right, let's back up a little bit. So this is probably going to go out of uh, focus. Um, this is the bottom right corner of this motherboard. Here's one of your M.2s, okay? And to the left of it is the other. 
Um, we'll go over this PCIe's in a second, but uh, here is the other one, the only one that has the heat sink. Uh, two of them were Gen 4, so honestly, you probably want to put your best one in there, right? And you can even see on the cover, PCIe 4.0. Um, you want to put that one in there. Help with the heat. This would appear to be a uh, Wi-Fi card here. M.2 Wi-Fi. Yeah, you can you can read what it says right there. CMOS battery. Now let's start with our PCIe's. So they've got one up top here, the one-inch guy. This is potentially where you'd want to put your uh, Wi-Fi card if you don't go with with this type of M.2, right? Uh, what I would do, then I'd have to run the USB up and around and under, and you only have one USB 2.0 on this motherboard, so that's kind of disappointing. But uh, So one inch, like I said, this is a PCIe 4.0 times 16, okay? Unlike the Z690s I have that have 5.0, this is uh, missing a couple areas where it would be, you know, forward thinking or forward compatible. Another one inch underneath it. This, it'd be nice if we had the one that's one size up, right? Um, but we do have, we do have three of the larger PCIe's. This is also a 4.0, so you could run, or excuse me. I'm not sure which one's which, to be honest with you. A lot of times they'll be labeled somewhere, but uh, one of these guys is an additional 4.0. Hopefully it's this one. Uh, to get it further away from that guy. So you could run two graphics cards if you wanted to. But uh, this is obviously the armor plated PCIe 4.0. And let me just check the manner real quick. And some of the other motherboards, you know, they, they do skip. But uh, I actually need the camera to zoom in. So we're looking at... I guess that's saying Gen 4, Gen 3... Gen 4. Okay. So there you have it, folks. This guy, Gen 4, Gen 3, Gen 4. So they do uh, separate them. Is there anything else worth looking at in this area? No. Uh, these are some additional case fan headers or the CPU. Nope. This is the CPU fan header and an uh, optional one or a pump. Okay. So you look at where the CPU is, a lot of times you'll have them up here. They are not here. They are right there, okay? So that's I'm not a big fan of that. I like them traditionally right up there. So we're going to discuss the 1x8 CPU power connector. And that's really all there is on this part of the motherboard, folks. Um, HDMI right here. Display port. Then we have USB 2.0, 2.0, 3.0, 3.0. Some of these might be, you know, Gen 3.2 or whatever, but uh, oh, actually, another USB 3.0, a Type C. Good stuff. Ethernet 2.5 gig there. Then these are probably Gen 3.2. Two of those. Not as awesome of uh, audio stuff as the last motherboard we did, but this does have, uh, starting the bottom microphone, headphone, line out, okay? I'm going to go do a little bit more macro over this so you guys can see it from some different angles. Probably will not uh, see another video done like this. I know, actually when I was doing my research on this, the one that I did look at, dude just had photos. Not to say on my other channels, I don't sometimes do an overview video of different motherboards, but obviously it's always better to have the real product so you can get a good idea. Um, you know, quality wise, first glance, this is, you know, lower level motherboard, even though the price does not really say that to you. Um, Asus definitely better than the ASRock motherboards that I've bought. Definitely better quality than Biostar. But this is on the lower end of, you know, quality as far as aesthetics go. And features. Um, 
you know, hundred dollars more, you could get this with probably uh, well, I I'm gonna say a hundred dollars more. Um, what would be make this motherboard nicer? You know, for the future, PCIe 5.0, DDR5. What hell would really be nice if they had dual channel or dual dual memory, and that means D4, D5, not dual channel. <laughs> so you could run DDR4 until DDR5 becomes cheaper. But yeah, there, there you go, folks. Um, there's my new motherboard. And like I said, we'll be probably putting the i5-12400F in it. Now, this motherboard supposedly allows you to do a base clock frequency adjustment. So we should be able to get some even higher benchmarks than we did with the, uh, the other motherboards, to include the Z690. Eventually, this may be the home of the i7-12700F. I uh, I just haven't figured out whether whether I'm going to put that in here or not, but um, thinking about it, definitely thinking about it. Hey, thanks for checking out the video. I hope this helped you. Um, let me know if macro doing this with the macro sucks, or I should shoot two videos. Honestly, maybe I will do two videos in the future so you guys can see these. Um, this isn't necessarily the best way to show it. From you know, if I want to be up here 10,000 foot level, it's blurry. Um, but boom, when I kick in the macro, you can't get those kind of shots, um, can't keep it in focus, right? But hey, let me know macro good, macro bad. Uh, I can always go back and do all the motherboards I have. Thank you.